So timing is arguably the most important part of strumming patterns because strumming is all about rhythm and without timing you have no rhythm. So in this video we're going to go over four interesting unique strumming patterns that all have a different rhythmic bass and these four different rhythms are what drives most strumming patterns that you're going to see and understanding them better is going to really help you understand strumming patterns which allows you to play a lot of different more interesting ones because you know what's possible. This is going to be part three of my four part series on making your strumming more interesting and unique. So if you haven't watched the first few videos, watch them in the link in the description below this video. And if you have, let's get into it with the first of your four new interesting strumming patterns. So our first core rhythm is going to be playing with swing timing or swing feel. So this one's pretty interesting. It's a little bit difficult to explain, so I'll do it with demos because you're still counting one and two and three and four and, but your on beats are longer and your ands are shorter. So it gives it kind of a swingy rhythm. So for example, in straight timing, you're gonna do one and two and three and four and. Very even, but if you add a swing feel it, you're still counting one and two and three and four and, but now it's gonna sound like this. So you can hear it's a lot bouncier. So this is used everywhere all over the place. Everything starting from blues, you know, classic rock like Jimi Hendrix style, pop music, reggae, dance music, really everything uses this in different capacities there. But it's very interesting because it doesn't visibly look any different if you see the strumming pattern written out, but you're making every beat longer and every and shorter. So the best way to play this is actually just to try and play it and listen to it as opposed to trying to think about it too much. But mainly the thing you're doing is you're making the on beats longer and the off beats shorter. All right, so here's our first example that you can try along. I'm just gonna be switching from a G to an A minor. So if I was just playing this straight timing, it would be like this. every single note getting the exact same timing. But in swing feel here, I'm gonna do one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So it gives it a much bouncier swing feel kind of rhythm, like you're on a swing. So G to A minor suddenly is like this. So there's your first one to try. So try that out and see if you can hear the difference between the straight timing and the swing feel. That's gonna be the trickiest part of understanding how to play like this, is actually being able to physically feel and hear the difference from playing everything the exact same time and then having some of the notes be elongated versus the other ones. Try that out, then we're gonna go on a second example where we're gonna go from a G to an A7 to an E7. For a very bluesy swing kind of feel, we're going to play the E7 for twice as long as the other two. So that's going to sound like this. So you can hear with that one, it's very bluesy, very swingy, kind of feels like you're riding along your horse in the old wild west. So the difference with that versus if you're just playing with a straight timing, just for you to hear once again, because hearing is the most important part of this, is this would sound like this in straight timing. So you can hear right there, it's just very more even on beat there, which is perfect for certain styles of music, but the swing feel is definitely better for others. And knowing how to use both of these is gonna make you much more versatile as a musician. 
All right, so moving on to our second rhythmic bass, which is three, four timing. So what you've probably done up to now is count one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Usually switching on beat one. So that's the most common is just four beats and then switch on the one. But there are lots of other ways that you can count as well, and certain songs will use different ones. Four is by far the most common. The second most common is three. So in there, the only difference is we count one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So you don't have that fourth beat. It makes it a very different feel to the entire strumming pattern and gives it a different sound. The timing works the same as when you're counting out a four beat strumming pattern, except you're only using three beats. Again with this rhythmic pattern, it's very common in all sorts of genres of music. I'm going to use a blues example here because it's very common in blues music, but you're going to find this everywhere. One big tip here is if you're ever trying to count along to a song and you can't really place a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, there's a decent chance that you might actually be in three, four timing and trying to count one, two, three, one, two, three might give you better results. So in this example, I'm going to apply a same kind of strumming pattern just in three, four timing. So I'm going to do a one, two, and three, and. One, two, and three, and. On A7, to D7, to E7, play it for two bars. One, two, and three, and one. 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 There's a very simple, straightforward example, but you can hear how it does have a distinctively different feel from if I was playing four beats per bar. Now, cool part about this specific example here is I'm playing seventh chords, which tend to be very bluesy, and bluesy often uses the swing feel. So what you can do is combine our swing feel with three, four timing to have something that's even more different. I'm gonna do a swing rhythm, but the exact same strumming pattern I was just playing. And you can hear how that one has a very bouncy pattern. So you combine these two and you have a ton of different new possibilities for playing different strumming patterns. This works just the same if you're playing a pop or a rock or a dance music or any other sort of genre. You can combine these two and you'll find these in lots of different examples of different songs. Moving on to rhythmic bass number three is a 16th note strumming pattern. So you're probably pretty familiar with your eighth note strumming patterns, which are your one and, two and, three and, four and. If we want to divide that even further, we can do one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. One e and a. So now each beat gets divided into four strums, which allows you to have a fuller sound, have more different varieties in the notes you're playing, and play faster. Because suddenly, instead of your fastest time being one and, two and, now you've got one e and a, two e and a, which plays a lot faster. Now one important thing to note here is if your chord changes are still slow and you're finding that part of it difficult, it's going to be really hard to get the strumming working at the same time because chords are kind of the first step to get. So if you do still have slow and buzzy chord changes, then start by trying out my 14 day chord challenge in the link in the description below this video. It's two weeks with a video every day that's going to tell you exactly what to do. By the end of it, you'll have smooth, fast chords, and you'll be much better able to handle these interesting techniques. Check that out in the link in the description below this video. What these rhythms tend to do is make a fuller sound because you're adding in more strums. So typically these are high energy, fast paced kind of things. These got lots of strums, lots of energy, and lots of excitement. All right, so here's a great example to start off with. I'm gonna do a one and two and a three and four and a pattern. So the biggest difference with these ones is you're actually gonna play down on every beat and every half beat. So the one and two and are all downs. And the 16th notes, the E's and the U's are played up. You've got twice as many notes, so you're going down, up, down, up in every beat instead of just down, up once. So I would strum this like 
One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Still that same constant down up motion, but now you just have four strums in each beat instead of two. So starting off, muted chords, playing our one and two and a, three and four and a. It's gonna be one and two and a, three and four and a. One and two and a, three and four and a. So you can see there, one and, two and, all of those are on the down strums. The E's and the A's are on the ups. So try that, get the hang of it just on a muted chord. Once you've done that, you can add in a chord progression. So I'm going to play, keep it simple on this one, I'm gonna play a G to a D to an A minor to a C. And then the whole thing is gonna sound like this. So it adds a lot more variation to what you can do when you have the 16ths in there because you add a lot of subtle variations to your timing that make it a very offbeat rhythm or onbeat or just really changes things up. Now if you were to play the same strumming pattern at a faster tempo, it can get very fast and that's another thing that you can't really do if you have just a single eighth note pattern. So faster it'd be like... So you get much faster strums by doing something like this. So let's use the same chord progression and try a slightly different one. This is a really good upbeat rhythm. One and two and a three e and a four. So you've got a big block of six strums in a row. So just on a muted string, that's gonna be a... One and two and a three e and a four. One and two and a three e and a four. Try that out, and then once you add it to our G, D, A minor, C chord progression, we've got this. So right there, it just adds a new element to our playing because we have multiple different subdivisions of notes that we can use. Try that timing, and once you got that, you've got another variety of different types of strumming patterns you can use. Now you've got a few different variations of timing you can use, and if you start to combine that with some of the techniques we learned in the last video, then you can get some really interesting strumming patterns and a ton of different opportunities for ways you can change up your playing. So for example, if I take the one and two and a three and four and a strumming pattern, and I just add our slap on beat two and four, now I've got something like this. So there's one example using that first 16th notes pattern. Now if we use our second 16th note strumming pattern, one and two and a three and a four, but now we play our bass note on the one and, then we've got a really cool pattern that sounds like this.
And there you go. With that, you can see how by combining our interesting timing with our new interesting techniques, our same old boring strumming patterns aren't so same old and boring anymore. So that's it for this video. In the next and final video of this series, we're gonna talk a lot about dynamics and adding that into everything we've learned so far. And by the time you've been through that, you're gonna have some very interesting, unique, and not boring strumming that's gonna be a lot more interesting than you've been playing and bring you to some very intermediate level strumming. If you learned something from this video, please hit that thumbs up button and say hi in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to see this video and see the next video that I release. If you're watching this more than a week after I've released the next video, then the next video will be in this description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.